Hi there, Katherine Guidry here, and today we're gonna to be talking all about how to improve your reception lighting. Thank you so much for joining me today for more value-based photography content to help you build a life and business that you are proud of. I am excited to dive in with you today all about a topic that many people fear, which is reception lighting. Also, I want you to know that I have a ton of free guides and great educational resources in the description below, so feel free to dive in. Let's talk about receptions because I know from personal experience that I have had a moment way back in around 2010, 2011, when I was photographing a cake cutting and I had a moment of not knowing what I was doing. Half of my photos that I was taking at the cake cutting were showing up black and then half of the photo was in full, true, perfect color. So as I was taking the photo, half of it wasn't even legible. The other half of the photo was perfect. Why was that happening? Well, that was a great indicator to me that I need to understand what I was doing at receptions. Let's just talk quickly about what that issue was and then we're gonna talk about a lot of things today around reception lighting, including my very simple, straightforward setup. When that was happening, I was running to an issue called sync speed. The shutter speed on my camera was set higher than 1 to 50th of a second or faster than 1 to 50th of a second. So let's say the shutter speed on my camera was 1 500th of a second. Well, my my off-camera speed light that was on a light stand was not able to sync with that very fast shutter speed because it was not able to keep up. So when you're setting your shutter speed on your camera, make sure it's something like 1 1 25th or 1 2 50th of a second and you won't run into that issue. All right, let's talk about some big overarching topics when it comes to reception lighting. The first thing I want you to do is to basically look into purchasing or renting the best gear that you can for a reception. Why is that? You hear people say a lot of times, the gear doesn't matter, it's about the photographer. That is true. However, when you start to see the bigger differentiating factors between expensive gear and inexpensive gear is at the reception. When I'm photographing a reception, I am looking to photograph with my lowest aperture lens. If you have a zoom lens at say a fixed aperture of 2.8, like the 24 to 70, that's a great option. Or in this case here, this is my favorite lens, the 51.2. I have a whole video um, about just this particular lens, the 51.2, because I love it so much. I love it because it lets in a lot of light and it's really fast to focus in low light situations. If I was to put a kit lens that came with my camera, maybe it had a variable aperture of f4 to 5.6. It's not to say that I couldn't use that lens on a wedding day, but if I was shooting with that lens at a reception, I would 100% have to use flash, and I would have to use a lot of flash because I wouldn't be able to use as much ambient light. My goal when I am photographing a reception, unless the ambient light is absolutely terrible and I don't want it in the camera at all, is to let in as much ambient light as I can without getting camera shake, and to pair it with a flash when needed or Best case scenario, I have enough light and it's pretty light and I can use just the camera. So let's say we don't have good light. Let's say that we don't have enough light, which is very common at a reception, especially with things happening so quickly and moving so fast. What do we do in that situation? We need artificial light. And you can do that one of two ways. You can have that artificial light on your camera in your hot shoe like this, so here you can see the SB900 is on my Z6 II, or you can have your light off camera. In this situation, you can use your camera to trigger your light, or you can use an actual remote trigger. Your remote trigger is something that would go into your camera and trigger your light. This remote actually doesn't go to this light, this goes to my pro photo light, but it can at least give you an idea of what I mean when I say a transmitter. It's a little small thing that you would put into your hot shoe and it would trigger your light. But most cameras will sync without using a trigger and so you could have that light off camera. Another option, especially if you have an assistant, is to use a video light. This is a very small video light. It's called the Loom Cube. And the great thing about this is that you can see exactly what you're shooting. You can look at the exposure, you can look at the color rendering, you can change the color rendering with this light. And it's so small, it can fit in your pocket. And another example of a video light is 
this one here, which is the Profoto B10, and I use this light for both constant light and also as a speed light. It actually pairs with the trigger I showed you previously. So that's a lot of different options. Don't be overwhelmed. You can use different options that suit your preferences, or you can keep it very simple. At a base level, I would suggest you to purchase a speed light. It doesn't have to be the best. This is the SB900. I do use this with my Nikon camera and I love it because it does twist all the way around. If I ever did want to say, put it on my camera and bounce the light off of something. At a base level, you just need a speed light to put on your camera that has a bounce card. The reason for that is because when you're bouncing light, it's going to soften the light, it's gonna spread it out, and it's gonna give it a more natural appearance. However, if you're in a situation where you're photographing what we call grip and grins, which is people smiling and getting together, you wanna to make sure that their eyes are filled in nice and bright. In that case, this sort of setup is very easy and very straightforward. There are a variety of light diffusers and modifiers that you can attach to the top of your speed light to help spread the light, especially if you have it tilted forward a little bit. But again, we're talking base level here. What do you actually need? You need a speed light and you need your camera. That is it. When I am photographing a reception, I really love this setup because I can move around and as long as I'm equidistant from my subject on average, my images look very consistent. I am constantly shooting for a very bright, natural, airy aesthetic and I'm able to get that with my reception images. When this light is on the camera, it doesn't really matter where my subject is or what they're doing because I'm able to move with the light. If I'm using, say for example, an off-camera light and that off-camera light is not held by an assistant and it's on a light stand, it's stationary, which means that as the subject is moving, this light is staying still. So those angles, the way that the light hits the subject may not always be optimal, and that is the downfall of that. One situation where I really don't mind having an off-camera light is whenever I'm photographing, say something like the cake cutting. During the cake cutting, I can have the assistant hold that light off camera and shine it towards my client. And I know the lighting is gonna be perfect because they're not moving, I'm not moving, and everything is controlled. I'm gonna just go ahead and say here that there are so many ways that you can approach a reception. And I have done and tried a few of those. I have set lights on the dance floor, shining towards the couple. Didn't love it because of the harsh shadows and like I just described, the changing movement of the subject. It wasn't always exactly what I was aiming for. I've also tried using a video light on the camera. You can actually put this Loom Cube on your actual camera if you wanna give that a go. But I've tried that and I've had clients and guests say that they felt the light was very blinding and distracting because it's constantly shining at their face. And that's the beauty of something like a speed light, whether it's on your camera or on a light stand, is that it's only triggering when you're taking the photo. Even if you're taking a photo of someone and that light is very bright, it's only that bright for one to 50th of a second. It's so brief the client will not even notice. The other two things I want to touch on is that when you're photographing, I want you to think about what's in the background of your image and where you're standing in proportion to your subject. So for example, if you're photographing the formal dances, the way that that photo looks facing toward the band is going to look very different if you're facing towards the guests. Before the subject comes in to do, for example, the formal dances, try to get an idea of what you're going for. If you wanna to photograph towards the band or towards the guests or towards an alternate angle altogether, make sure that you have that mapped out in your mind or maybe you do both. In that case of photographing a detail, for example, you're also gonna to wanna to think about that. As you're photographing a detail, walk all the way around the detail and see what story you're telling. A photograph of a centerpiece in front of a wall that's next to it is gonna appear very different than a photograph of that centerpiece with the reception venue in the background. Neither one is bad, they're both great photos, they just tell a different story. We want the details to tell the story of the day in the way that we feel most describes the experience. So it's up to you to decide, and if sometimes you're unsure, do both. And lastly, in terms of the reception, if you wanna get those really stellar photos, make sure you're getting in the mix. People will mirror what you give them. So if you're in the dance floor and you're walking around, that's the type of reaction that you might get from people. But if you're on the dance floor and people are laughing and having fun and dancing and you're, in, you're holding your camera and you know vibing with the music and hey, 
in interacting with them, they're gonna give that back to you. So you wanna get into the mix, get into the vibe of the reception and get people to mirror that back into your camera so that you're capturing those authentic reactions as they're happening. I know this was a lot of information, so very quickly, I'm gonna run back through the main things that I want you to take away from this video. First, you're gonna wanna get the most expensive, high quality gear that you feel comfortable with. And what I mean by that is not necessarily about the price point as much as it is about what the camera and the lens features are, specifically in regards to its ISO capabilities and aperture. So the Z6 II and the 51.2, if you can afford that, that is a great setup. But if you can't, even the 51.8 will give you more light than the 24 to 70 2.8 or the 50 with a 4 to 5.6. You want the lowest aperture that you can afford comfortably to photograph your reception because it's going to let in light and it's going to quickly focus. Secondly, you want to make sure that you have a speed light. If at a base level you're unsure of how to use reception artificial lighting, I want you to put that speed light on your camera and set it to TTL. TTL is essentially autofocus for lighting. It allows your camera and your light to work together to understand how far your subject is away and to capture that using its own algorithm and photographing it evenly every single time. TTL is incredible and I highly recommend it, especially for somebody that's not as familiar with artificial lighting at a reception yet. I do recommend you bring one video light with you. The Loom Cube is amazing. You can fit it in your pocket, you can fit it in a bag, and it's just great to pop on for details or cake cutting or things that you have a little bit more control over. And you can have your assistant hold it or you can actually hold it in your own hand. I want you to remember that sync speed is very important. So on your camera, you wanna make sure that you're setting your shutter speed to anywhere around maybe 1 1 25th or 1 2 50th of a second. If you set your sync speed to be high higher than that, maybe one 500th of a second, your flash will not be able to keep up when it's off camera. And sometimes your camera won't even allow you to go above that because of the sync speed. So keep, keep that in mind. If not, you'll see your photos coming out half black and half in color, and I'll save you from making that mistake. Think about the direction you're shooting. What's in your background? Do you have the dance floor in the background? Do you have the guests, the band? You know, same thing with details. Those all tell a story. And then lastly, you want to get into the vibe of the reception. Make sure that you're having as much fun as they are because they will reflect the energy that you are giving back into the camera. I want this content to be very helpful for you. So if there's anything that you're unsure about or something that you'd like to see, please let me know. We also have weekly free emails that go out to our email subscribers and an educational shop. That's all in the descriptions below. Thank you so much for joining me today. Don't forget to subscribe so you get to catch all of our value-based content and happy shooting. Bye.